The SBA stimulus that everyone's been talking about has abruptly changed just weeks after SBA put out the original notice. Here's what you need to know. Hello, and thank you for joining the Art of SBA Lending. I'm your host, Ray Drew. And this week, the topic is SBA stimulus. Now, you might say to yourself, Ray, didn't we just talk about this on the podcast just a few short weeks ago? Yes, we did. But guess what? It changed. Now, some might say, you know, we should be used to this. The SBA has been changing guidance on the PPP and the 7A program for the past year. But for the most part, those changes have all been for the better. They've tried to make PPP more flexible, and in terms of the 7A, they released notice after notice to help lenders navigate these uncharted waters. But this is the first time that they've made a change that was much, much worse than the original guidance. Basically, for new 7A loans approved from March 1 to September 30th, 2021, the SBA is now going to only make three payments instead of six payments, still capped at nine grand a month. For the pre-COVID portfolio, which is loans approved before March 27th, 2020, they're going to provide only two months instead of three, with an additional three months instead of five for the harder hit industries. For loans approved and fully funded March 27th, to September 27th, 2020, there are no additional payments versus the original guidance, which said maybe they'll get payments if there's some funds left over. But now the new notice basically says they're not getting anything. And then for loans approved in that time frame, but closed or fully funded after September 27th, 2020, the original guidance said they're going to get six payments. Well, now they're going to get three. And then finally, loans approved between September 27th, 2020 and February 1st, 2021, still get nothing, no change there. So existing portfolio aside, this whole push we've been making to promote these incentives for small businesses to borrow money and start businesses, expand their business, all that, it's now kind of muddied because instead of six payments up to nine grand a month, they're going to get three and they're still going to get the SBA fee waived. And mind you, this could change again, and hopefully next time it's for the better. I think the reason that the SBA made this change is because they looked at the amount of funds available for the free payments, and they just figured that it's going to run out too fast. So, so before anyone had the chance to make any of these loans and get the free payments, they just changed it so that the funds can last longer. The only problem with that is that small business owners already put their plans into motion with these incentives in mind because this was official guidance had already come out to pull the rug out from under these businesses is uh, an unforced error you know every year we have a budget and the sba program could always run out and it has and then you go back to washington and you ask for more money and there's bipartisan support for the small business administration so usually you'll get the additional funds that you need but in this case we haven't spent any of the money so it's a little different. So now if you're borrowing a million dollars on a 10-year term, instead of getting about $80,000 worth of incentives, you're getting about $54,000 worth of incentives. It's still good, but it's definitely less attractive than the original. And in a time where we're trying to stimulate the economy and create new jobs, why cut back on this program? There's so many other government programs and little nuggets in the budgets that have been passing that I think are far less important than getting money into the small business community, who is, by the way, responsible for creating over half the jobs in the private sector. I mean, aside from beating COVID, I don't know anything that's a bigger priority. And I don't think Congress is opposed to that. But the SBA, I guess, has been dealt a tough hand where they have to figure out do we provide what was in the original legislation and just have the funds run out really quickly and create a potential firestorm? Or do we scale it back now, create a firestorm now, and then try to make the funds last a little longer? And potentially maybe small business owners can get these additional payments down the road once there's more funding. So I had to tell all my small business borrowers this week that I know the SBA said one thing, 
but now it's this. And I had to email about 10 or 15 of them that were in process already thinking that they were going to get six months of payments. And I have to tell you, the responses I got were really gracious. Here's a couple of the responses I got. What a pity. Six months would have been really helpful. Anyway, we are grateful for what we get. Nice. Thank you for letting me know. This does not change my decision about buying the business. It was just a nice little extra bonus. Hopefully we can close before the fees come back. Okay, fair enough. Appreciate the update. I am still very happy with these three payments as I didn't even know I was going to receive incentives in the first place. Gotta love that. You know, I'm located down here in South Florida and we have a large immigrant population and the majority of my borrowers are actually immigrants and they have to work for everything that they get and I love working with them for that reason because I'm the same way. And this is just yet another example of them not wanting to take anything for granted. They don't want a handout. They considered this a nice bonus, but still disappointed. And I'm sure a few of them will reach out to their representatives and senators and express that, and they should. So the lesson here is that the guidance is still ever-changing. And not only do we need to wait until guidance comes out before we start talking about changes to these programs, we have to also caveat that with, this may change, which makes it really difficult for small business owners to plan, but that's the world we live in right now. The goal here is just to educate and serve the information to the small business owners and their advisors on a silver platter because it's complicated and it's changing and it's hard to make sense of it when you're having to also deal with all the other things that small business owners have to deal with this year and last year. So our jobs are really important right now, and we need to make sure we're being clear, accurate, and informative in the marketplace. I still think this is going to be SBA's biggest year ever for 7A, so keep fighting the good fight. We'll be back next week.